Hi all, welcome to what is new in WSO2 IS Finance Zero webinar. I am Isura Karnaratna, a technical lead of WSO2 Identity Server team. Aisha Disanayake also joined with me. She is also a technical lead of WSO2 Identity Server team. Yeah, so before we're going to discuss about what is new in WSO2 Identity Server 590 release, Let's look at what WSO2 Iron Server is. WSO2 Iron Server is an extensible, cloud native, fully open source IAM product. Also, it is designed for the developers who build customer identity and access management solutions. Unlike other vendors, WSO2 Iron Server includes the core of the product and the extensions connectors under the Apache 2 license, which is the most developer-friendly license. IDN Server provides the capabilities of authentication, authorization, federation, identity management, identity governance, bridge identity protocols, API security, and a lot more. It supports almost all standards, authentication, authorization, and provision protocols. For example, it supports SAML, which is an authentication protocol. It supports OpenID Connect, which is also an authentication protocol. It supports O2, which is an access, which is an access delegation protocol. It supports Scheme 2, which is a, which is a provisioning protocol. It supports SACML, which is a, which is an authorization protocol. So the IDN server is capable enough to provide almost all your identity needs. Let's discuss what is new with IS590. There are a bunch of new features and feature improvements and performance improvements in this release. Some of these features are RESTful APIs for user self-services, cross-protocol single logout, simpler configuration model, and sub-team capability. We will discuss in these features in next slides one by one. So Aisha will discuss about the RESTful APIs for Representational state transfer, widely known as REST, is an architectural style for designing APIs. It provides a set of standards that makes it easier for systems to communicate with each other. In prior WC2 identity server versions, most of the existing APIs were SOAP based. Today, the WC2 IMT team is in the process of making all the fun functionality of WSO2 identity server available via RESTful APIs in a unified manner. REST APIs for core management capabilities and end user interactions are becoming essential for building both on-premises and cloud-based solutions. Plus, RESTful APIs are flexible, faster, popular, and scalable. They are now favored over SOAP APIs, which are becoming outdated. All the newly onboarding REST API schemas are defined as Swagger to talk Two documents in WC2 Identity Server. This makes APIs to be easily understandable and consumable. They also have the advantage of having inherent SDK support that comes with Swagger. The identity developers may use a technology of their own choice to consume these APIs and easily generate clients using the Swagger definition. REST APIs for user self-services. In an IAM solution, users and their accounts are the center of attention. In such user management systems, self-service activities are frequently used. In WS2 Identity Server 590, we have introduced self-service REST endpoints that are dedicated to manage end-user resources as they are authenticated to the system. Some of the key REST API offerings are Session Management API to view active sessions in the WS2 Identity Server and terminate them when required. Uses challenge questions and answers API to view available challenge questions in the system and provide answers to decide challenges that will be later used in recovery flows. Workflow, workflow approval API enable managing users pending approvals to list, approve, or deny pending workflow requests. User account association API to associate particular users account with other accounts. Auth to authorized apps management API to view and revoke or to OIDC applications that they have permanently provided the consent. You can also register with your devices as well as manage 
TOTP services using REST APIs. We will not be stopping here. Currently, our team is working on implementing RESTful APIs for administrative functions and will be released in next version. Authentication and authorization for the APIs. There are three ways to authenticate to these APIs. The basic authentication enables user's credentials to be sent along with the API invocation request, or else a user can use obtain a token using an auth to flow and use the token when invoking the API. Additionally, you can use mutual SSL to authenticate in order to consume the APIs. Authorization for the APIs is enforced at the endpoint level using permissions. Each secured endpoint has predefined minimum level of permissions that is required to be able to consume the endpoint. In order to access a particular endpoint, a user has to belong to a role granted with the defined permission level or higher. There are some open endpoints that do not require authentication or authorization depending on the use case. Yeah, so the next feature is the cost protocol single lookup. I used to support different protocols for authentication. For example, support SAML and OpenID Connect. Let's take an example. Let's take two applications. The first application is application A, which supports the SAML protocol. The second application is application B, which supports the OpenID Connect protocol. If a user looked into the application A and then tries to log into the application B in the same web browser, he will be seamlessly logged into the application B. That is the single sign on. The single sign on works in cross protocol manner. So what happens if the user logged out from the application A? Will it be logged out from the application B? That is not happening in the previous releases of the INS server. That's a limitation of the cross protocol single logout. So cross protocol single logout comes to the picture to mitigate that limitation. So this is an example of the previously how the single logout was working. So, so here you can see there are two applications which support the SAML protocol and there are one application which supports the OpenID Connect protocol. When a user wants to log out from a SAML application, the application will send a logout request to the INS server. INS server terminates its session and send the logout request to the other session participants in the same protocol. But it won't send the logout request to the OIDC application, the OpenID Connect application. So in that case, the OpenID Connect application will not log out. That is not the expected behavior, the logout flow. So in the cost protocol single logout, what happens is when the, when the user wants to log out from one application, the logout request will send to the end server and the end server sends the logout request to the all the session participants respective of the protocol. So in this case, the end server will send the logout request to the SAML applications and OIDC applications as well. In this case, the all the application will be logged out successfully. In general, WSO2 products are built using collection of components and many of the components have their own configuration files. This applies to WSO2 identity server as well. Therefore, previously users had to configure these configuration files individually. For example, there are files such as access to XML, carbon XML, identity XML, and master data sources XML that are component specific configuration files. The requirement to meddle with multiple files negatively affected the develop experience. Even when you try out advanced features, experience is interrupted due to the time spent on configuring the relevant components. So from version 5.9.0 onward, WC2 Identity Server facilitates a single configuration file called deployment toml, which will be responsible for all the configurations related to WC2 identity server. The ideal user experience is when the user doesn't need to pay attention to components and only focus on the configuration. So with this new model, you will only have to deal with a single file. This will tremendously increase the user friendliness and minimize human errors that could happen during configuration. This new configuration file contains level of abstraction. User will only see the mandatory and essential configurations that 
uh, in the product. Some configuration will be in, inferred through mandatory configurations without user interventions. All the configurations are grouped in a proper structure and the parameter naming is consistent. Also, the user have the ability to use proper time units for configurations. One of the limitations in our existing web app pages was that there were no rich extension points to rebrand or retheme the look and feel for the consumer need. So far, the practice was to completely override the existing UI pages, mainly JSP file. One main concern is that whenever a WAM update or a version update is delivered with improvements to these pages, developers had to redo the changes on top of the updated pages. Now we have abstracted out the common theming points such as headers and footers and provided an extension point where you can maintain the customization separately. This is useful because it enables a hassle-free rebranding and theming capability and makes it easier to maintain the customization. Yeah, uh, feature improvements. There are a bunch of features introduced in IS 590 release and there are some feature improvements also done in 590 release. So these are some highlights of the feature improvements. The first one is the session management. In previous versions, in order to support the session management feature, WSO2 IS analytics server was required. IS 590 has the inbuilt support for the user session management. So the users can view their active sessions and manage them out of the box. The second one is the adaptive authentication. Adaptive authentication is used to change the authentication flow based on some conditions. To support this, each service provider needs to have its own set of script functions. If the IND admin needs to have the same function for several service providers, the same script function needs to be duplicated. As a result, the process of managing authentication scripts get difficult. This feature supports a set of functional libraries that can be imported into the authentication script, so it makes the admin, identity admin's life easier. Office 365 Federation. It is able to configure single sign-on for Office 365 with the IND server previous releases as well. But there is a limitation. That is, support a single sign-on for multiple Azure AD domains the same tenant in WSO2 IOD server. This improvement is done to mitigate the limitation by introducing an SP qualifier. Carbon platform. Upgrade the platform to run in Java 11. So the WSO2 IOD server finance zero release can be run in Java 11 environment. Third party dependency upgrades, for example, Tomcat and Log4j. That part dependency updates was done to keep the product up to the latest industrial updates. Also, it mitigates the secret vulnerabilities of the previous third-party versions. New documentation. Documentation was moved to the Git docs to make, make it more community-friendly and attractive. Yeah, let's go to the demo. So this is the new look and feel of the WSO2 documentation size. So this, this documentation is made, completely available in the JIT, GitHub and it's written based on MKDOS. So if you are, like to contribute or fix a typo, you can simply send a PR and it will be available in the site. So when we were documenting the new rest apis we have used swagger ui into in our documentation site so you can make use of the swagger ui capabilities while you are browsing the rest apis for the self-service task also we have added postman collection which is fully configured to run with the local ws2 identity server instance and if you, you can click on run in postman and simply try out the rest API, corresponding REST API in a local environment. So if you log into the WSO2 
I didn't serve a dashboard and we my login sessions you can see the available sessions in the system for me so if in this if you required you can also terminate these sessions so i have to i have logged in to two browser from two browser sessions to app, applications in this system and if i click on terminate the session will be terminated if you log into the ws2 id server management console there's a new section called function libraries where you can ma maintain all the adaptive auth function scripts you can add new adaptive authentication functions by clicking add and i have already added the sample function here so you can provide a name as you decide and define your function here so it's simply defined in the javascript function in the adaptive auth script and you can use this function in the service provider local and outbound authentication configuration simply import this uh, javascript function uh, script here and use its function in your adaptive authentication script so now you don't have to copy paste or you can you don't have to read rewrite functions which are reusable in ws2 identity server 590 that that was just a uh, simple introduction for, for some of the features in ws2 identity server 590 but you can try out our Q quick start guide and read more and follow documentation for more information yeah so as we discussed WC2 Identity Server 590 contains the feature additions, feature improvements, Hassle free configuration model, Java 11 support, and bug fixes. So, those are the main reasons why you need to migrate your older versions of Identity Server to WC2 Identity Server 590. If you are not using WC2 Identity Server as of now, why should you try it? Because it's full open source, no vendor locking, and allow quick innovations. Support for industry standards, out of the box support for most of IAM use cases. It's extensible, developer friendly, and API driven. Also, we provide 24 7 development and production support if you're interested. So, it's about WS2 ID Server 590 and what's new in it, in it. And you can download version 590 and you can go to the documentation. If you find any issues, you can report them and you can ask questions in our stack law for channel as well as you can write to our, us through our mailing list so this is the team behind ws2 identity server if you zoom in you can see the missing people including isura in the board and thank you very much if you have any questions we can take it now so there are questions uh, in which cases self-registration is used for a tenant does it apply to SaaS applications Actually, a self-registration is not bound to a service provider. So we can register users to the INS server. So we can register users to either to the super tenant or tenant environment, uh, but it's not associated to a service provider. So there is no SaaS concept there. So another question, can we use Java 8 with new 590? Yes, we support Java 8 also. So it's an additional improvement that we support Java 11. So another question can you show how can re redesign login screen so we can show how we can redesign it i think we have a sample here so i have set up a sample in the and so um, so this is retheme page uh, consent management page actually so i can continue to login and if i log out it will be because I have already have a session, so it's single look in me. So if I log in, so this is a rethemed look for the WC writing server. To do this, I just had to do. So this is where I have my WC writing server. So if I browse to repository deployment server web apps and so this change i have done in authentication endpoint so there i have added this new extensions folder which is not 
available by default and that i there i have two files header and the footer where i have changed the header and the footer so in this one i have uh, In this one, I have uh, added some CSS to change the look of this page, and I have changed the logo and the name of the business, so which is corresponding to this UI. So when so all the files that you can override are available in this includes folder. So anything you can get a copy from this includes folder, and you can override them in extensions okay so when you do a, when we do a warm update or in uh, another feature release uh, in other release we don't do any changes to this extensions file it's not available by default so those files will not be will not get uh, replaced by warm updates So there's another question about the configuration toml file. Do all the configurations are in there? If they are not, how to configure them if you want to configure? So so we have so in this uh, new configuration process, we have templated uh, most of the commonly uh, changing configurations. So by default, all the configuration are not there in the toml file. You can only you only need to add anything you need to change. So if you go through the documentation in each and every feature enablement, you can see the new Tomal configuration that you need to see. I think that answers your question. Yeah, there's another question. Does it support API manager? If so, what version? Yeah, so WC2 answer 590 is compatible with uh, API manager uh, API manager 300 as a key manager yeah I think that's all the questions for now so if you have more questions please uh, email us so we will answer you quickly and thanks for participation thank you very much have a good day